So hello and welcome to another review at Fred's Fine Product Reviews. This is a water gun, but not just any water gun. This is the Spira. Spira has made great water guns for a long time, and this is the new edition, the Spira 2. Now I'm going to walk you through it and show you all the details about this powerful water gun, which is for people 14 years of age and older. So basically, it's an adult water gun. I'm going to do things with this that you should not be doing with your water gun, so you're going to want to stay with me. It's designed in Germany, but it's made in China. That's right, the Spyro 2 Mach 1, and the batch number is right there, Lima 2, 3, Sierra 5. So you can check it out. This is not a cheap water gun, but then again, you want to pay for quality if you're going to use it for the things that I'm going to use water guns for. Look at the packaging that it comes in. Pretty darn good. You can join the team. Look at that card right there. This thing, by the way is surprisingly well made and look at the graphics here just like a comic book strip it's your quick start guide and it shows you how powerful it is but of course it shows people shooting it at each other i'm not going to do that it has an on off button on the bottom and a charging port so it's electric that's right it draws the water in on its own and you just push buttons and once it charges with your usb it holds a charge for a very long time so you have more than 25% tank. You can hold the trigger after a shot for three seconds and release for maximum power. What they mean there is it shoots kind of a solid stream instead of the individual staccato puffs of water that come out. Shoot until the display shows zero, zero, then keep the trigger going. I'm going to show you all of that. Better to show you than to talk about it, right? Join the team. Comes in blue or red. I chose red because red is a more aggressive color. That's right. The, the price is the same for both of them. You can look down in the video description, by the way, to get a link to one of these if you think you want to buy the best water gun ever made. If you're like me and you're tired of having your grandkids run up to you while you're at the barbecue, squirting you with their little squirt guns, and you want to be prepared to get them back at long range, this is going to be your water gun. It's going to shut them down. I thought I would get a super soaker at first. I thought, man, those things are pretty strong because I have a special task that I need to do that involves taking out insects. That's right, and I thought, what would be able to give me extended range so I don't have to get right up there? How about a water gun? So this Spyro 2 is here. Has a nice heavy grip. By the way, this thing weighs quite a bit in hand. It feels solid. Look at all the details on it. So even if your hands got wet and soapy, you'd be able to grip this thing. But there's a marker on the leading edge here you don't want to dip it in water more than what's already on it. So you wouldn't take this into a swimming pool, for example. So that would be the advantage of a super soaker. You could jump right in the water, stick the whole thing underwater and fill it up, come out of the surface and shoot everybody. But this one does not get to be immersed. And it's protected by intellectual property rights, of course. It's patented. Spira.com. So you can go there to learn more about it. More close-ups about the knurling on these grips. This is obviously, it doesn't feel like a toy. It looks like a toy. If you were super close to somebody, you could hit them pretty hard. You could shoot cops off a shelf with this. There's the on-off button right there. It looks like stainless steel. And then there's the little weatherproof peel open part for the USB-C connection. Works on any charger. So once it charges up, but it arrived already more than half charged. I was pretty pleased by that and it shows Zero, zero, that's how many shots you have left. So in other words, it's not full of water. But it also shows you the electrical loading there. The instructions are pretty darn good. Pretty simple, straightforward. The display, the muzzle, the water inlet, the trigger, on-off switch, USB-C charge port, and of course, each one has a serial number because there's a warranty with it. So when you buy one, you're going to want to register the warranty. Also, don't put boiling water in here thinking you're going to kill things with hot water or use it for weed control or something. It gives you the temperature parameters right here. They want it lower than 86, and they want it above 32. Pretty safe to do it above 32, because below 32, the water would be frozen. So anyway, here's the button. Let's turn it on. And then, of course, let's pull this open and charge it up. It did take a while, by the way, to get a full charge. So we connected the USB-C right there, put it on charge, because I wanted it fully charged before I did my review. And that rubber seal right there, pretty watertight. I would say I'm pretty confident that you could get in a water fight with one of these. Again, I wouldn't jump in water with it. And the other thing I wanted to know is if I could charge this off of a portable battery pack like this one right here, which is solar powered, and it worked. There you go, it's charging. 40% charge. 
And it did take a while, a couple of hours, in fact, to get it up to full charge. But the good news of that is the charge lasts you for a very long time. I got a lot of refills over several days with this gun while I was testing it out, and I haven't had to recharge it again since. So pretty impressive stuff. And just more details, more information. When it's not in use, it will automatically turn off after 10 minutes, so it's not going to waste your battery. Also, the warning again about the water temperature, not above 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 Celsius. And uh, do not operate the pump if the water inlet is not in water. So in other words, don't push the trigger forward as if you're filling it with water if the nose of your water gun is not actually in the water. We're all the way up to 99% charge now. Just about to be able to fill it with water and get out there and do stuff with it. Now I'm not going to follow all the rules. Look at this, I'm stirring up my water. Why would you have to do that? Because I'm going after things with this water gun that have to be killed. That's right, I'm going to use Dawn Ultra Pure Essentials Dish Liquid. Why would I do that? Because it defeats the cuticle, the wax coating on insects. Not just any insects, wasps. This time of year, you run into wasps. They just happen to be there. Two tablespoons per gallon is the perfect mix to do that. Now I have to say that the instructions tell you to use only water, pure water, nothing else. But I decided to use Don Ultra in it. Now I figured if I ruin it this way, I won't turn it in because it'll be my fault. But I don't think it's going to ruin it, and you're going to see how that works. Because when you shoot, this is a stirrer, by the way, because people probably want to know what kind of stirrer this is, a magnetic. Anyway, when you fill it up with the Dawn Ultra Dish Detergent Water, and if you've got an insect problem, whatever your insect problem is, maybe it's stinging ants or something like that, but in my case it's yellow jacket wasps, which attack my honeybees. And now this thing is fully charged. It says zero, zero, which means it doesn't have any shots left in it. So I'm going to put it in this 3,000 milliliter beaker and fill it up. Remember not to push it in below that fill line, which is in the front. I don't know what happens if you do that wrong. But you can see that it's drawing water right in. I recommend you get a bucket, fill it up, and take the bucket with you. Especially if you're going to do what I'm about to do. If you're going after in-ground yellow jackets that are apt to sting your, sting your kids and all your favorite people when they go to mow the yard, this would be a way to get at those without having to approach it very close. So we're going to do that. It's at 100%. Now, by the way, when it says 100, when you can squirt, it doesn't mean 100 discharges. It's not 100 squirts. Now, right out by my pond, among these rocks, look what's here. A bunch of yellow jackets in the ground. They're coming out. They're still excavating, by the way, and they do this sometimes next to a rock or a tree base or something like that where people walk and you can squirt them. So I tried to squirt them right out of the air to see how that would work. You can hit it on the sides of the rock. They dig their tunnels pretty good. And uh, it does knock some out of the air. The advantage to this is, by the way, even weeks later, the grass did not turn brown, so nothing happened to the vegetation. Now, in the past, we might have used fire and things like that to take out hornets and wasps. But, you know, if you have a drought area, you can't use that. So water might be the next best thing. So, they're dying. Seems pretty straightforward. We can shoot them from different angles. But I do have to say this. This was not a 100% kill for that particular nest. Let's do it from a distance and see what that looks like. Shoot it in the center. I also hit it on the right and on the left to balance and bounce some of that water coming into the sides to make sure it gets under that center rock. And so it suds these things up. You can clean stuff with it if you wanted to. So there it is. We're down to zero. We have to fill it up again. But look, it did not affect the charge at all. This thing will really go the distance. Now this is a close-up, slow motion, just to show you kind of what it looks like. This is another location, by the way, another in-ground yellow jacket wasp nest. And the one dead center there looks like it might be a queen, because at this time of year, they're generating a whole bunch of queens that will each winter over and start another wasp nest. So, if these wasps and the in-ground nests and nests that are hanging from trees and things like that, if they're out away from people, let them go. There's no reason to knock them out. 
But if they're attacking your honeybees, if they're attacking your children, your grandchildren, or if they're attacking the elderly and they're in places where people can't avoid them and they're putting people in harm's way, then this would be a very easy way to deal with them. Look at them. They're biting each other. They're kind of mad. So you can squirt them with Dawn Ultra Dish Soap, 100% biodegradable soap. And the advantage too is you're washing things. Look, there's an apple in the foreground right there. Maybe we clean the apple a little bit. Rinse that off with water. I don't know what else it would do, but this shows you in real time kind of what they're doing. And uh, you have to come back and do this on two or three different days, but the numbers of wasps are profoundly reduced with each time you show up and hit them with your squirt gun. Now I did wear protective clothing because I didn't know. Maybe the wasps would be able to come out and come right after me, but the thing is, it's so effective at knocking them down at the entrance that I didn't have to wear any protective clothing, although I have to say, err on the side of caution and probably wear at least an insect veil over your face in case one flies at you and then you end up being stung. Of course, we have to have slow motion sequences. And this kind of shows you really how much water it delivers. Quite a bit with each shot. Look at that. So the soap is in there too. It's going to... Uh, Again, make it so that they can't walk on top of the water, which a lot of insects are capable of doing. The high wetting ability of that soap definitely makes it so they sink right into the liquid and then they drown. So you can shoot across the grass instead of straight down at them and you can take some of them out of the air. As soon as they get dunked in this stuff, they're kind of done. So the thing is during the day, there's a lot of them out flying around still. Scouts, foragers, those that are feeding on pest insects, by the way. So these do have a benefit. Again, I'll say, if they're not in an area where they encounter people, where they put kids at risk of being stung and things like that, you're much better off to just let them go. Because they do control pests. They collect and kill pests and feed them to the developing brood, which are in chambers underneath the ground in this case. But these, again, this was not on my property for this one, and uh, they needed help with it because it actually was in the middle of the grass. It wasn't even right under a tree or something. It was right in the mowing path. How they got started there, I'll never know. But they were coming out with little mouthfuls of dirt, so they're still excavating and expanding. Some people will say, Hey, just pour hot water down there. By the way, pesky red squirrels. These are different than the gray squirrels and the fox squirrels. These things show up, they steal everybody's nuts. Oh, what just happened? Well, he didn't like that, but let me tell you what. He came right back and I'm pretty sure he cursed at me in squirrel language. So if you've also got a problem with squirrels on your feeders and things like that, maybe there's a woodpecker pecking at your gutters or something make a noise you can shoot this at them too once again just some slow motion recaps but this is not uh, the ultimate thing one of the things that happens to people when they have squirt guns or when they have uh, rural property is paper wasps build their nests up high and that's another reason why I thought maybe I could get a squirt gun would this work by the way the super soaker sure would it would not be as much fun as having an electric squirt gun but uh, Super Soaker could do the same thing. Here's our friend the squirrel. He's right back. Uh, he's not too pleased with me, so we're going to let him go. I'm not going to squirt the squirrel again. It gets their fur wet. They say things they regret. They're not very happy. But right here, I have a videography hide. So I can shoot uh, images of ducks on the pond adjacent to the spot right here. But guess what's inside? That's right. Paper wasp nest. So that's a good sized paper wasp and this is what happens they catch us off guard they build this nest all through the summer and then by fall this is October by the way it could be as big as this now it doesn't look like a lot is going on there and I think their numbers have been knocked down because we've had cold nights down to freezing so I do see a couple of dead wasps right there in the entrance and uh, so they're not as active as they were just a couple weeks ago. So we're going to use this one as a test to see if uh, squirting them with this squirt gun 
would shoot the paper wasp nest apart, take it down. So if this were on a porch, overhang, high in a garage, in a barn or something, you could hit it with your Dawn Ultra Dish Soap with your Spira 2 and uh, not have to spread any pesticides around. you just be using uh, your dish soap, biodegradable stuff. Doesn't hurt the plants, doesn't pollute the soil, and it hits pretty hard. I'm just sticking my arm in there to kind of line up. See how they're going to react when I stick my hand in? And the reaction is very anticlimactic, I must say, because look at that. You just shoot it off, and uh, there's like no wasps. So there's that cleaning the inside of the hive while I'm at it. So there's a lot of dirt in there. There it is on the ground. So we're going to treat it like an overhaul situation. If we were firefighters, we'd come through after the fire was out and we'd break apart all the material to make sure there were no remnants, no chance for a reflash there. And uh, there is an advantage to this. We're not using fire. There's no hazard associated with this unless you were shooting near electricity or some area where putting water would not be a good idea. But uh, this is pretty handy and I just wanted to see if it would blow apart a paper nest and it obviously will. Slow motion sequences now. Yeah, that's pretty dramatic for a little blast of water. Oh, another one. It does break it apart. Oh, look at that. So if you're like me, sometimes you find a little wasp nest uh, hanging in a doorway somewhere or under a street light or something like that. This is a sped up sequence. And uh, so now actually they would be in reach with this squirt gun. You could shoot something that was 13, 14 feet up. And of course, if it's next to a light, make sure it's one of those lights that's sealed for weather. It would be if it was on the outside of your house. And uh, you can shoot the paper wasp nest apart. And once it hits the ground, get in close. And uh, you would keep the wasps in or around the nest and it would take them out. Also, if you did this at night, you wouldn't get any specimens flying around and uh, trying to get people. So at this point, this is way overkill, not very exciting because there weren't any wasps. Just the few that were there at the beginning. They took off. Queens, I saw a male or two. The males have long arched uh, antennae. They don't sting. They're just kind of left over waiting for the next cold snap to take them out. But so, the test is sad. It passes. If you've got a pest, you can squirt them with your squirt gun. All that's left over is a bunch of damp paper. So I would be comfortable seeing that if you had bald face hornets or something like that right near where you are, that the Spira 2 squirt gun would handle it. You want to have a bucket of dishwater right near you ready to go because you don't want to be running off to fill up when you get that last shot out. Also at the end, pull the trigger, hold the trigger, and that cleans it out. Dawn dish soap, gallon of water, two tablespoons per gallon. And now we're at the point where we'd have to charge it up again. The charge lasts a very long time. I'm very impressed. I definitely recommend this Spira 2 squirt gun. You need to get one.